Hello video people, welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff. For you today, we have my opinion of Canon's 10 to 18 millimeter STM lens. Is it a turd wearing a bow tie? Is it like when you crack an egg and find it's a double yoker? Or is it like the scummy bit at the bottom of your cup of tea when you've had too many biscuits dunked in it? What am I talking about? Let's find out. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to help me out and support this channel. Let's do it. So what is it? Well, it's a super cheap, super small, super wide lens for crop sensor cameras. But is it super quality too? Well, there's a few features that on paper instantly make me err on the side of... No, probably not. But one mustn't prejudge. It has a zoom range of 10 to 18 millimeters, which is a full frame equivalent of roughly 16 to 29, and it has a variable aperture range of f4.5 to f5.6, which is a full frame equivalent of f6.8 to 8.5. Always remember to multiply your aperture by the crop factor as well as your focal length. So I'm calling it. This is not a low light lens, and you can definitely see why it's so small and inexpensive. The smaller aperture, which doesn't stay constant through the zoom range, means less glass and much less complex design than if Canon were to make it like a fixed aperture zoom lens. So this is not the kind of lens that gets me excited usually. I definitely normally prefer wide aperture prime lenses and that kind of thing. But it does have some features that may be of interest to videographers. It has image stabilization and very good image stabilization at that. If you think about filming handheld on an ultra wide lens, you might not even feel the need for IS. But this 10 to 18 has, as I perceive it, one of the best examples of image stabilization, full stop. Here's a handheld shot at the long end of the lens, which is 18 millimeters. You can see it's a little bit shaky here. And then when I switch the IS on, it looks like this. It's much more steady looking, and for me, the mark of really good IS is when it allows for some natural motion and it doesn't look jerky in any way. Zooming into 300% really accentuates what I'm talking about. We've just got that natural motion when the IS is on, it doesn't look unnatural, and that's what you want for video. It also has the STM focusing system, which usually I'm not a fan of for video as it's not friendly for things like manual focus. Recently I filmed a video about Canon's 24mm f2.8 pancake lens, which also has the STM system, and I found it to be decent but not silent. The 10 to 18 is as near to silent as I've ever experienced, plus I found the focus accuracy and smoothness to be excellent. On top of all this, the lens only weighs 233 grams. So with the lightweight, decent focusing system and top notch IS, this seems to like, it's just a no brainer for gimbal work. But how's the build quality? Hmm. Well, it has a plastic construction. I mean, this thing is seriously plasticky, even the mount. So yeah, that's not great. Plastic sucks. Also, the focus ring is pretty small and honestly quite poor. It's a bit loose feeling and manual focus is bad because it's Canon's STM system. However, the zoom ring is lovely. It's fairly big, smooth and well placed. An important factor with ultra wide zooms is the front element. Some have bulbous front elements, meaning you can't use filters. Luckily, this 10 to 18 doesn't, so you can. It doesn't have the weather sealing rubber gasket on the mount, so it's not gonna be an all weather lens. Overall, it's decently built. Uh, when you hold it, it's just so obviously not up to the same standard as Canon's L lenses, but you know, it's priced that way. But how's the image quality? Well, it's a super wide lens, so you will see some barrel distortion, especially at the wide end. No problem if you're taking photos right, because you can easily correct it in Lightroom, but it's not so easily fixed in video. My solution? Don't bother, lean into the distortion, embrace it, give it a hug. If you need to be shooting at 10 millimeters, you have to be, you have to expect to be in distortion town. You can expect a little bit of vignetting with this lens. This is shot at 10 mil at f4.5, and this is at 18 mil f5.6, but you know, I quite like vignetting, so it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Why would you buy it for video? 
gimbal work. That's why it's so light, small, and the focusing system is so smooth and quiet. It's just really good for all of those things. The footage is nice and smooth when put on a gimbal. I did have a couple of issues with the focusing, like here, when it sort of blipped out of focus for some reason. I'm not sure why. And I should say this was shot before I had a chance to update to the EOS R's new firmware which has improved autofocus. Otherwise I was really happy, the images look really sharp. Generally the focusing is as advertised, it's as good as you'd expect. It tracked faces really well in areas of high contrast. It even worked really well when filming a backlit subject when typically that would be more challenging for a camera to pick up something like this. It would work well for vlogging purposes as well, as long as you're always filming in a fairly well lit space but ah, that small maximum aperture is a real killer. Hey, it's half just trying out this 10 to 18 in vloggy mode. Obviously I've got my shades on, so you can't see that I'm not really looking into the lens. God, it's so windy up here. I've got it on the zoom crane and it's not like in the wind at all. Honestly, apart from that, the footage you get from this lens can be a little uninspiring. That's me being diplomatic and for anything close to, to being considered cinematic, I would rather save up and get a couple of prime lenses with big maximum apertures. Of course, I could try and dress it up as being more cinematic by adding a cinematic grade, widescreen bars and some music and vignette, that kind of thing. It looks like this. not so cinematic, but what are the pros and cons? Starting with the pros, because I'm totally glass half full. Glass half full half, they call me. All right, no one calls me that, but you get the point. Firstly, as I mentioned, you've got to love the small price, size, and weight of this lens. It makes gimbal work much easier, obviously helped by the stellar image stabilization. The image is also really sharp. The zoom ring is really nice and doesn't have a bulbous front element, so you can add filters on the front. As for the cons, well, due to the wide angle nature of the lens, plus its small maximum aperture, your footage isn't exactly gonna look like it was shot with Arri Master Primes, with bokeh balls and blurred backgrounds and whatnot. Also, it does feel plasticky. I've seen some in some reviews where people have said that Whilst it's made of plastic, it's nice plastic. Personally, I, I that's an oxymoron for me. I really, I just don't like any kind of plastic. And for me, it feels significantly cheaper than most other lenses. And that's about it. To sum up, I'd recommend this lens if you own a Canon EOS R because it works well with the 4K crop mode or if you have any other APS-C Canon cameras. Think of it as a utility lens, one that won't cost too much, won't give you eye-popping results, but when you need it, and you probably will at some point, it will get the job done. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, then I'd love it if you could. Just hit the blob on this side, and I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel, don't you know? of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and the one underneath will be my latest upload. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Hey.